I do agree with Nick when he, when he says, when he, when he gives the, uh, the love song, not just as a genre, but within the whole field of songwriting, a particular high status. I do agree with that, and I do think that like the non plus ultra, the, uh, the, the ultimate song is a love song. The Nick Cave love song is all, always distinctly different from a love song per se that someone like Burt Bacharach would write or Lennon McCartney would write. Um, tends to be sorrowful, tends to be mournful, tends to be full of melancholy, tends to be about lost love. I read this essay by Lorca. He talks about that being this uh, unexplained sense of, of um, sadness and sorrow and things. And I think that that's preoccupied me for, for quite a while. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's this essence in the love song um, that gives a, a love song its depth, its spirituality. The Sorrowful Wife is a good example of, of, of what I'm talking about because it is setting up idyllic, Arcadian situations, but something is not quite right. So that the song takes on a melancholy form, but it is actually a, a love song, it's a wedding song. We sit beneath the knotted yew, the bluebells bob up around our shoes, which is where I sat with my hugely pregnant wife at Kew Gardens. And it was an idyllic situation. There's something that attracts me to the pastoral setting or the idyllic setting that's on the point of collapse. That this, this kind of uh, beauty that we can take hold of at times is very, very fragile. When it comes to the idea of using the, the actual kind of meat of your relationships with other people in your art, uh, it's actually what defines a serious artist. Uh, you know, the problem with with uh, a lot of popular music is that it makes those references so general as to be anodyne. The more personal songwriting, I suppose, came about with The Boatman's Call. And as much as I love that record, there's an element to that record that, that um, disgusts me. Uh, in the sense that, that, that I think at that time I, I was like some kind of thing that sort of sought out disaster um, you know and kind of digested it and sort of excreted it out again in the form of a song in the case of a couple of songs on that album where clearly people are going to know who the song is about I don't think that that's really advisable I don't I don't feel very comfortable with that West Country Girl would be a, a very good example of a song that is specifically about someone and I think it's, it's pretty well known now that it, it was about his relationship with, with Polly Harvey, another singer from the West Country. I don't think it does the, song any, uh, the, the songs any favours that, that you can't listen to a song and think, well, that's about that and that's about that person and, and that was what, that's what was happening in, in his life at that particular time and all of that sort of stuff. You don't need all that baggage.
more recently, I've, I've tried to take a more detached, objective role in writing songs. Even though they are still autobiographical in a sense, I feel I'm standing more outside of the whole thing, and in that way they are possibly more inclusive. He Wants You is about a, a man uh, moving towards the object of his love, uh, who waited asleep in an idea-free sleep. She hadn't yet been born, completed, until she, until he, until he kind of penetrated her with the force of his love. And uh, he moves slowly towards her. And, uh, and really that required a kind of circular um, caudal structure. Um, so that, so that the, the, uh, the, the structure of the song didn't lock down the, the, uh, the, the, the lyrical line too much and the, and the lyrical line could flow through it. So uh, it just became a, a, a series of, a circular series of chords with a kind of nifty little uh, melody. hanging cliffs and under the many stars where he will move all amongst your tangled hair and peep into the sea Ooh, he'll awake and walk and draw the blind and feel some presence there behind and turn to see what that may be well babe it's me and he wants you With the, with the song He Wants You, I don't think it's autobiographical in the sense that I sat down with a particular person in mind, but it's a dreamlike song. You know, it's a fantastic, fantastical song. His songs really deal so much with a, with a desire for a pure love or with a desire for, with this, with this longing for peace in spite of all the unrest and in spite of all the in spite of all the turmoil that's happening inside of him. I think a lot of his love songs are really uh, songs of a spiritual yearning dressed in Anne Summers. Um, that's perhaps a slightly trite image, but, but in some sort of uh, erotic finery. Uh, and I think the fact that he's displaced it to the third person makes that all the more evident. W.H. Auden uh, talked about the traumatic experience waiting to happen, that the child waits for it to happen uh, in order that his life becomes a serious matter. Certainly for me, that was the death of my father when I was 19. He died in a car accident. Um, he was there one minute and gone the next. 
Um, and that, and that uh, I mean, that, you know, that had a huge impact and, and for, for many years and still does, I, I imagine, uh, over what, I, what I've done creatively. Um, I mean, very, very much after that, I left Australia and uh, I just, uh, you know, very much, you know, I, I can see this now, but it was very much about that, that I just kind of rocketed forward and, and kind of didn't really stop. My memory of it is that he just put it away very quickly and then moved on and didn't really deal with it at the time which, you know, is then, of course, it's going to come back. And uh, it's certainly in the 80s it came up at one stage and he denied it outright, but then that's to be understood. I think he, he kind of came to terms with it and saw it for what it was quite recently. Perhaps, I don't know, perhaps these were uh, songs that I were writing, that, that I was writing were, were kind of songs for my father in some way, or, or some way of keeping the, the idea of my father alive in some way. I often have a feeling of, of, of my father being present in some way. There may be an element of, of me writing songs to him, but I'm not so sure about that. To each burn a candle for you, to make bright and clear your path, and to walk like Christ in grace and love and guide you into my arms. Into my My wife and I came here a year ago. I do like the kind of rotting grandeur of the place. What the journey has been, if any, is to make some order out of the chaos. For that reason, I, I like Brighton. There is a sense of order about this place. I think he's writing a different kind of song, which, in inverted commas, is an adult love song about adult concerns, including, how do I do this? Where am I going? Can I go out on stage and sing these songs without having to be some kind of shadow or party of my younger self? How do you prevent yourself from becoming a burnt out rock star? Well, there are several, several solutions for that. First of all, never become a rock star. Then second is just notice that there's another life except being a rock star. That helps a lot. And uh, third, the third thing is don't burn. I would, I mean, I choose B, and uh, I guess Nick choose B as well. Still burns, but noticing that there is another life. Come in, oh come in. 